and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't wait to share with you this incredible guest. You guys can see him on the screen, but I have been a fan of his for quite some time. He does some pretty incredible stuff and he's got some great content on LinkedIn. So I'm going to make sure we put a link on the show notes so that you can follow Justin on. Whoops, I just let the cat out of the bag. Guys, y'all give it up for Justin Dilly. How are you doing? Can you hear everybody clapping for you? It's got quite the oh, fan yeah. club. Oh yeah, 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 resounding applause. <laughs> <laughs> it's a standing ovation, the whole works. We just gotta let everybody simmer down for a minute. <laughs> hey, Good Justin, idea. I wanna give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Sure, um, well, my name's Justin Dilly. Um, I've been in the multifamily prop tech space specifically for over 15 years. So. Um, when I started, the word prop tech didn't exist, and um, I was new to the industry, and so I kind of learned along with the industry what this was. Um, prior to prior to that, um, it was just sort of software for real estate, and no one really knew how to use it, and as the internet and as smart devices and all these things kind of rolled out, that's how old I am, <laughs> um, I kind of was educated along with the industry. So I became an <clears throat> advocate for people using technology, wanting to um, you know, make a change with how they're using it on the day-to-day -day for residents, for staff. Um, and I think the thing that really attracted me to it was the the, the people that, you know, you're dealing with people's work, people's living life, and that technology was this um, the supporter, but it didn't replace anything. It was just mm -hmm. really augmenting kind of all the fabulous people that were working and living in these properties. So that is so cool. And I love that you've you've kind of ridden that growth of, of Optech. It wasn't that at the beginning, but you've ridden this and helped support it along the way and it's become such a critical integral part of the multifamily industry and you have been a part of that supporting people to use this and adopt it and, and embrace it and it will continue to grow I imagine in some in some capacity in the near future not I, I you know don't want to get into that because today's about you Justin <laughs> And, you know, just I, I, I've been a fan of yours for quite some time and I've followed you on LinkedIn. I think you do some incredible stuff. The content that you share is is really, really inspiring. And I love how you write. Um, so I've just been a fan of yours. And so I love to peek behind the curtain of inspiring people. And I, and I like to ask what inspires you? And so, Justin, I asked those questions. I mean, you came back with three great points. And I love how you kind of package these together because it really you and I were talking earlier but I love how this is the the alliteration of how you package this together but we'll unfold this unpack it as we talk about it. but the first one is collaboration so Justin tell me what that means why does collaboration inspire you well I think it's um for me it's inevitable um right like you know we're collaborating now on this discussion you know you collaborate with um any kind of group of people um, I, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm totally an extrovert. Um, I like my <laughs> introverted moments, but I do my best work, my best thinking, my best, um, anything in a room of others. It doesn't have to be a huge room. It doesn't have to be the smartest or the best. It's just when you are sharing experience and sharing thoughts and sharing ideas with each other, great things happen. I've never I've used to teach in classrooms. Uh, I used to be in, you know, theater. I, there's like a ton of like experiences of collaborating. I used to be in the marching band. When you, when you do things together, great things can happen. And I think since I was very young, I noticed that and I kind of just wanted, I gravitated towards places where I could collaborate with people. That is so cool. And what's interesting is I like how, you know, I'm an introvert, introvert myself and, and you, but you still, pull energy from groups uh, or, or being in the room to 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 add or to create or multiply the value that you could do by yourself. So I imagine, you know, there's some sort of like intentionality that you kind of have to go through in order to do the things you do and 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 really appreciate the collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I you um, you kind of rise up above sort of any kind of um, inclination to go um, hide in a shell 
or uh, just be on your own walking, you know, a mountainside, which are all great things for me. Um, but when you know what's on the other side, when you've seen it, I, I'm mm -hmm. much, much more um, excited about going into a room because I know what will happen at the end of that conversation, a meeting, uh, anything. Yeah. And I imagine you walk into a room and I've seen you walk into some virtual rooms and you just add you just add value to it. And so I love how you're able to inspire through overcoming this, you know, kind of self obstacle. But you overcome that and you add value when you're collaborating. So I, I can see how that inspires you and other people at the same time. So thank you for that. So so, Justin, the second thing that you talked about or you shared with me that inspires you is creativity. So you talked about theater, you talked about marching band. So you've, you've got some, some creativity in you to be able to do those things. So, but what does that mean? Or how does that creativity inspire you? Well, I think, you know, in our, our kind of our day-to-day -day work, we um, probably often talk about this as out of the box thinking, um, <laughs> you know, people like to say that a lot. Let's, let's like put this out of the box, you know, let's, Let's spin it on its head. I don't know. I, I, I'm sure I can come up with a few other cliches. I love but, it. <laughs> but I think that the exercise of doing that, that create the way of looking at something differently mm -hmm. um, is, is sort of what life's about. I think that any kind of journey, relationship, spirituality, physical, like it's about looking, turning it over and, you know, coming at it from a, a theater background and understanding that is that there's never a, you never totally have the answer. You know, you put a show up on Broadway, you do the play, but there's probably a better way to do it or a different way to do it the next time, or maybe there's a rewrite, or maybe it's a different casting choice. And so it's an evolutionary kind of thing. And creativity allows you to constantly evolve with the current climate, with people you're working with, all of that. Yeah. I, and that's really neat. I think a lot of us are afraid to be creative because we're afraid to fail in what that creativity may create. Mm -hmm. And I, I like how you talk about that. You know, sometimes you just have to step out, you know, and that creativity gives you that opportunity, you know, change the paradigm to think outside the yeah. box to, you know, all the all the little cliches that you could talk about there. But there truly is some truth in creativity allows you to get better if you if you're like change your filter if you update the way you're thinking um you know that's the way we've always done it that that just stifles creativity and i, and I like how you talk about that yeah failing upwards is probably the best thing you can do you know mm -hmm. I, whether i'm putting content out in on linkedin whether i'm applying for particular jobs or reaching out to particular clients um Failing is okay because you you learn you gain something from it. You might lose something, but what you gain is is greater because the next approach, the next entry, the next sale, whatever it is, mm -hmm. is going to be that much stronger and that much more informed. So uh, creativity allows me to do that. That is so cool, and you yeah, and that creativity is what helps you take that failure or miss you know miss the mark or whatever, and you and you put that creativity to spin it up and and make something new or learn from it and, and make something better from it that's so cool i love that justin that's wow. really neat so the third thing you talked about that inspires you is creation and and i'm curious where this kind of where this comes from or, or yeah. what this means for you well it's a, it's it's kind of a it's a meta one it's a big one um so it can mean a lot of things um, did you just say the word meta I this did. is going to be good. This is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you know, everything is created. You know, my first instinct was, was when I was thinking about things that inspire me, I was thinking about nature and that's a creation, um, right? Whether it's like God's creation, mother nature's creation, whatever, that's a type of creation. But the more that I thought about it was that products, art, um, people sometimes, if you're raising a, ch a child, like these are all versions of creation. And I think that seeing something that go through a process and have some kind of result is, is inspiring. You know, if somebody, you made this show, that's inspiring, right? Someone wrote a book, you wrote a book, that's inspiring. <laughs> like people do all these different things. And when they create something, 
that didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty powerful thing. And I think wow. we sometimes take it for granted that, oh yeah, people do this, people put widgets together, people develop software, they develop platforms, they build buildings. I mean, there are some buildings that I walked by in Atlanta that are stunning and someone mm -hmm. put that all together. And that's, that is inspiring. And I think wow. that we could easily, you know, go past it, look at all the data behind it, all the things that it means and the dollars and the cents and all of it. But at the end of the day, something is created. And I, I, I like to celebrate it when I, when I recognize it, I don't always recognize it, but I do like to celebrate it. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, Justin, what that kind of, for, for me, what I kind of glean from that is, is awareness for you is pretty powerful because a lot of us, like you said, it just, we just take for granted for the, the things that are there, the things that are the buildings or a book or a podcast or, you know, whatever it may be, but all of those it's had to be created. And you, you get inspired from that because you have this, you have this awareness of these things, if you will. And that's, that's a powerful kind of intentionality and authenticity within you that you're like, man, there's, there's some incredible things out there. Yeah. I, I had a, I had a theater company for a while in Boston that I ran and the focus was oh. the, the focus was a process um, of performance. And the idea mm. was that we were focused on the development of getting to the final show, the final product or whatever. And I, I believe that process is so important. Um, it's in the sense that obviously there's different ways to do it. There's no one way and one path, anything like that, but that all of this does take effort. All mm -hmm. of this takes collaboration. All of this takes creativity. Look at me circling back. It's oh like my I, gosh. I didn't plan it, but I was waiting for this, <laughs> but it did, but it all comes together. And I think that's the thing is the process of making something is fascinating, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And, and I love, Justin, how you just, you threaded it all together, nice and neat with a little bow, because it takes the collaborations to work together, the creativity to kind of figure out what it is that we could do. And then you create it, you actually make it happen. Justin, you just like, I thought I said, this. I said meta. I said meta. I did say Dude, you, you went above and beyond, man. That was fantastic. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Justin, we're, we're right here at the end of our time. But before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. Sure. A, a closing thought. Um, I guess I think that I, I think being um, I think encouraging people to be brave and kind at the same time. I think that a lot of times brave and it gets labeled with aggressive or egotistical or, you know, something that's super strong and, and goes against the other. But I think there's a lot of brave uh, ways of, of, you know, amplifying other people's voices of listening, being brave is sometimes just shutting your trap and listening. Um, and I would encourage people to find lots of different ways to be brave. Um, yeah. I love that, man. I, it really does. It takes bravery to be kind um, because I think so all too often, you know, the, the social norms has us being negative. Yeah. And so, Justin, I really like how you, you talk about it takes bravery to be kind and have that. I think that's that's good stuff. I'm hanging on to that. There's some good notes in this one, Justin. I love this collaboration, creativity, creation, be brave, takes bravery to be kind. Justin. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Guys, I'm going to put Justin's link to his LinkedIn um, um, on the show notes. So make sure you follow him. This He's got some great content on there. I, I truly look forward to, to finding his content on LinkedIn and reading it and being inspired by it. So make sure you guys follow him. Money by guarantee if you don't like it. Um, Justin, thank you so much. Thank, thank you guys you. for joining us. And we will see you on the next episode.